So basically what we had to do is to reinvent the profession. You couldn't just take a curriculum um, from here and just say, okay, we can teach you the same thing in Beirut. It's not relevant because the critical assumptions about what makes planning possible do not exist. And so for the last 15, 20 years, I think there's a lot of work that's been happening between me and other colleagues in trying to imagine who can be the custodian of the common good, which piece of the common good, and how do you actually um, teach students to think through and become themselves people who can design a small common good. I, um, I recall, for example, when uh, the first large wave of refugees arrived to Beirut back in 2012, I was approached as a housing expert by UNHCR. And what they wanted is to produce housing. They had a sense that you've just had several hundred thousands of people in the city, and where do you house them? We need to produce housing. How do you produce housing? And my reaction was, let's see where people are housed. And so I went back for a month, uh, tried to work in the city's uh, low-income neighborhoods, understood that there was a new market that had developed with uh, people resubdividing their homes, creating rooms and spaces in them, and that a number of neighborhoods in Beirut had become sort of de facto camps, places where over 70% of the residents were actually uh, refugees. And so I came back to NHCR with the proposal saying you should not produce housing. The market has produced the housing. What you need to be doing is upgrading the neighborhoods because you know what? Those neighborhoods now, it's the infrastructure that's crumbling. They cannot support anymore the size of the population. On the one hand, what you want to do is engage the local context with explanations for how things work. Put in the, in the public realm issues for debate. And so for the last 10 years, we've been publishing every two or three years a piece of work that says, how about you think of that? And that's something that we simplify, that we put in local newspapers, that we go on TV and talk about. In 2012, for example, we talked about security. Beirut was becoming a city that was highly securitized after the assassination of Prime Minister Hariri. And so you had roadblocks, no parking signs, lots of public spaces were being closed, and we wanted to create a conversation about, so what does it mean to have a city with no public space? We ended up producing a map of Beirut that showed every single time, roadblock, uh, closure. And when the map came out, colleagues in Berlin and Barcelona started saying, oh my god, we want to publish this, we have the same, we never thought about it. And so this trend of securitization that we, we were trying to denounce from Beirut became a discussion that went all over and got us to discuss with colleagues how, what is different, what is the same, and how to actually address it. Of course, in Lebanon this was very important because people suffered from the fact that uh, these roadblocks were creating traffic jams, they were uh, preventing circulation. My main entry point has been a study on the delivery drivers, so the food delivery drivers who in Beirut uh, over the last six, seven years have increased exponentially in numbers. So now anywhere where you go in the city, you see these young guys with a black backpack on their back and they're driving motorcycles, sometimes they're going one way the wrong way, they're uh, lined up uh, in front of restaurants and they've really changed the lands a lot of things. And one of the things I argue is they've changed how we actually eat in the city and uh, our, and what we eat, and they've changed the way the restaurant industry works. So they're not just changing a small neighborhood, they're transforming an entire society by this practice. And what is beautiful about, uh, about the organization is the, of this group when you meet it is that it does include Lebanese and Palestinian people as well. And they have uh, their WhatsApp group, and so they warn each other about the police. And they reorganize themselves in the neighborhoods. This neighborhood uh, has heightened security. You will be stopped as a Syrian. Don't go. I would go. So they will redistribute their work between each other. And that creates the kinds of solidarities you want to talk about in this uh, belonging to Beirut. And it also challenges. Um, it also challenges uh, the way in which we think through. Um, 
uh, forced population displacement in terms of people who are hidden, who uh, have no entitlement, because by being visible, by driving the motorcycle, you're actually claiming new space in the city. And they're very clear about that. They find that uh, this visibility is an added freedom. It's a way in which they uh, can uh, uh, reclaim their presence uh, affirmatively. And this program, basically, uh, what they teach you is first critical thinking, and it's uh, it's a very like there's a very heavy weight uh, in this regard. And in a country like Lebanon, where where you see uh, ideologies and identities being mirrored and reflected uh, in the planning practice and in the architecture, critical thinking makes you rethink and deconceptualize the way you used to. You used to perceive things early on. So actually we forged that uh, dialect uh, with, with the minister and we actually were able to change his mindset. I think he transformed from a minister of tourism to actually having Urban Planning 101 now, which uh, I mean it's quite rewarding and encouraging because uh, you actually, I mean, although, I mean, to finalize, uh, I think in Lebanon, we all think it's a very challenging context. We cannot start from anywhere, but actually we're quite lucky that we have this con uh, that we have this context because in more advanced countries, everything is set. So you don't have a lot of room to maneuver here. You can start from zero and you can actually start the change starting from the government, reaching the planning to implementation. Planning policies have been used uh, to influence or even reinforce ideologies, uh, unrestricted uh, steadfastness as ideology in certain zones, in other zones could be uh, to reinforce uh, unlimited or unleashed uh, uh, unrestricted profit, or it could also be used to reinforce informality. So it's not about the private versus public because in Lebanon they sometimes they fully merge or they can drastically diverge. The thing is how can you adopt what are the value systems that we as planners or practitioners adopt while working in any of these different political ecological zones.